Why? We're gonna lose one of the kids. Why did you guys go out there? What? He's dead. What are you doing out there, kid? Uh, you know, I was just nature running. Yeah, he's dead. Frozen. Two infections. You get medical experience from uh from that. <laughs> what a way to train medical experience. Just get a bunch of serum and then let your people get bit. I think there are better ways. It's interesting because uh when these turrets end up hitting the zombies close by, some of the shots are obviously gonna miss. And so it ends up damaging the wall, and then people come out to try to repair it, but a lot of times the barrels have ran up, you know? It's actually not worth recruiting. There's a prisoner you want to recruit, but he's an imp. Uh, you're gonna love this. The answer, as usual, is it depends. So, impids definitely have some downsides, of course. But, if they are really good at something you need, or they have other traits or burning passions that will, like, outdo the depressive, for instance, then they can be worth taking, you know? Like, let's say you really need uh, a crafter, and you get an impid with burning passion crafting. Well, they're probably gonna be happy almost all the time. I didn't attack them! All right, I'm leaving. If you guys get to the base, we'll trade. Good luck. Anyway, it might be worth taking them because they're going to be happy, you know, crafting all the time with their double passion. So, have yeah, a burning passion underground or, or something. And for sure, for sure take them. But it, it's going to be on a very case-by-case -case bias, I, I feel, unless you're doing some kind of themed run. Well, great. That cost us 25 rep. Not 25, 15. Anyway, rep well spent. And now they're not even our ally. All right. All right, well, I guess we'll wait for a trade ship. We're gonna have a period with no zombies here in just a moment. We can maybe get a get a little bit done, but yeah, it's not gonna last very long at all. Uh, our goal right now is to get our steel back up because we are basically out of steel. Once we get steel back up, we'll go mine that plasteel and get our uh, advanced components going again. But yeah, we can't really do very much right now other than uh, or while we have so little steel. So we just gotta wait. And uh, the game is running pretty slow right now with 500 zombies. It'll be a nice little speed up for a day when uh, when the 0% hits, but steel all over the place. Tens of thousands of steel nearby, but just gotta get it out of the ground. That's gonna take some time. You trailing is so slow. Is there any way to slowly speed it up? Not really. Past like the normal stuff that you can do, like drill arms and things, you know? But it's just that the game is running slow because of all the jump, the zombies. Like, look how much faster everything's going now. Ah, uh, the tick rates, the tick rates. Yeah, with, uh, you can look at mining speed. Anything in mining speed you can increase. But it's, you know, like drill arms, for instance. Drill arms do work even on uh, deep drills. Oddly enough. Doesn't make sense, but a few things make sense. Here they come. I'm going to get the game slow down again. Oh, we actually pulled out quite a bit of steel during that little, little bit. Transport pod, a relationship. Oh no. I have to try to save them. It's someone's mother. Please don't bond with anyone. Please don't bond with anyone. It's part of the run. We have to we have to try to save them. Please, please don't bond with anyone. Alright. Rescue them. We'll bring a group up to help. Over here, we got a discussion the other day about corn versus rice. On the standpoint that typically corn was better because of the lower labor per food, and here was the viewpoint the blight response to this. Extinction at times also figured that's because more blights. Uh, there's a lot to it. So corn is more work efficient. Rice is safer. So rice is safer for many reasons. One is that if there's an event for corn, it takes a lot longer for corn to grow back. Not just blight. A fire, um, you know, toxic fallout in general. Um, any kind of event that can impact any of that, including just a fire, is more detrimental with corn because it takes so long to grow back. You have a 70% corn harvest go bad because of a cold snap or something like that, and that's all your food, you're going to be in big trouble. Rice is just going to grow back in a few days, but it's more work intense. So there's a trade-off depending on what you care about more. I don't care about the work trade-off as much because I know I'm just going to be playing forever anyway, right? I'm going to be on here forever. Um, and usually I have big colonies. The other thing that isn't talked about very often is corn comes in in such bulk that a lot of times it inflates your wealth very quickly and very suddenly and you can literally get raids that are like bigger than you can handle just because you had a big corn harvest whereas rice is coming in more incre incrementally and it's worth less so there are benefits to, to both but i generally grow a rice because it's just safer it's safer in a, in a lot of ways um despite it not being as efficient work also when you get to hydroponics you can't grow corn in hydroponics 
hydroponics are twice as fertile as rich soil. And so then you get into the, the state of it's like super efficient in lots of ways. It only takes two hydroponic basins to feed a pond, a normal pond, off simple meals forever. If they always harvest and plant immediately and turn it into simple meals, just two of these can feed a single pond forever. So rice is just really, really safe and really efficient in every way other than work efficient. So now there's a reason to grow corn for sure. And especially um, you're on your long growing, you have a smaller colony, or you're actually stockpiling a lot of food, you don't care about the wealth. So the answer, that's a very long way of saying it depends. That's the re- oh no, they joined! <laughs> That's the reason I usually do it. Uh, do, do rice predominantly. It joined. It sucks. All right. Nature of this run is we have to keep them. Hey, they're finally. They're finally converted. All right, let's get a name for this person I didn't want. Kane, welcome in. Welcome in, Kane. I really didn't want you, though. I really didn't want you. Uh, asthma, fast walker, body modder, aesthetic. That's all good. It's all good. Get you change over to our ideology another constructor is not bad for the colony they can also deal with the children in fact let's have them do that now we'll get them artificial lungs yeah after we get stuff built back up yes i can i can choose who they become locked with but it's, it's be dangerous uh let's see who has mood issues this is a female so you can't put them with um with alpaca a male the most mood issues. Uh, what about our great leader? Our great leader is a female, I forgot. Our pack is already married, you know, they've already had kids and stuff. What are the greedy pawns? Very neurotic might not be bad. They're also gonna do conscious boost, so... It would be maybe good to put with one of our crafters. Let's see, Zusha. All right, all right. Who was it? Just Kane. Kane. Romance, Zusha, there we go. There we go. New lovers. All right, all right. So now they're going to have a cautious boost, which is really awesome. They're also going to have a mood boost from the psychic bond. I'm going to go ahead and replace these with auto doors. We're using those a whole lot now. What's the doomsday clock at? Um, We got 367 days left or the world explodes. 367 days left. We're almost halfway to doomsday. Jim, you're still cutting that tree? For God's sake, Jim. For God's sake, I'm a bricklayer, not a lumberjack. I think a bricklayer could take down a tree relatively quickly. Maybe Jim's just afraid of trees. He's afraid of trees. He's afraid of a tree falling on him, which is actually a very rational thing to be afraid of. You never cut down a tree before. In fact, most people should be more afraid of a tree falling on them that haven't cut down a tree before. <laughs> I'm to think of it. Marriage is on. Nice. Gold. Hey, we got gold over there. Nice. The plague. I don't have time for the plague. Hey, everyone get to bed. All right, our steel quite built up. So we're finally going to go and, uh, and get the glass steel. Go hoover all it up. How do you leave the base? Well, every now and then there's a day with lower zombie counts. So what you can try to do is you try to clear out zombies on the path that your caravan is going to leave. And then you keep the caravan out of your base. In fact, I might actually do that here. Oh my god, all good ship. Finally. It's been forever. Now I'm kind of thinking about taking the, um... Yeah, look how many barrels we have. That's kind of nuts. Thinking about taking the drugs out that we just put in there. You know what? We can trade those. That's fine. Advanced components, they only have one. Components, we might as well grab those. Yeah, I didn't think they sold Glitter World, unfortunately. I might just go ahead and get golds. I think we might as well. We're mining the Plasteel now, so we don't really need to do that one, but... We'll get golds. It's great. Get all the golds. There we go. Um, beggars. I don't think so. You guys are going to become zombies. Yeah, I betrayed you. Sorry about this. Oh, they're all children. Hey, children, why'd you come with weapons? All right, well, I have done this. How could I be so cruel to have betrayed this group of children? Why? Why have I done this? All right. I'm a monster. Okay, I'm paved out around. Oh my god, I did do paved. I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, paved is fine. I meant to do concrete, but... Anyway, I just did it for the speed. This is fine, though. It's going to be less beauty hit. <laughs> I was not even thinking about it. I didn't even notice the lines because I was reading chat so much. 
No, I meant to do concrete and I just accidentally hit the wrong thing. There we go. Now we don't have to cut anymore either. Any tips for darkness meme playthrough? Are you starting with darkness? Because my, if you want to do a darkness playthrough, my best advice is to start as fluid and wait until you get a sun blocker and then go into darkness and tunneler. If you wait till a sun blocker, darkness is just incredibly, incredibly strong because you are in darkness always on your map. And so you always have the boost from it. Now, if you are starting out as darkness instead, um, it still pairs best with tunneler and mountain type bases. Uh, and yeah, the there's no real like specific advice for darkness in that regard other than either grow mushrooms or get your, uh, get your hydroponics done, but they're gonna be really unhappy being in the light. Roofing the map doesn't, doesn't work for the accuracy thing. It'll help them to not be unhappy, but it won't give you the accuracy, unfortunately. I always wondered why they did that, but I thought they would fix it. We thought it was a bug, but it, apparently not, or they just decided not to fix it. But I don't know. You can if if you test it, let me know. But I thought that we thought that's what the patch note was, but then afterwards it turned out that's not what it fixed. They changed the um, dark light stuff, but I don't remember the darkness in combat being fixed. I hope I'm wrong because it's a really big deal that that's, you know, that screws it over so much. But for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, as soon as a single part of any room has light or is open to the outside that has light, immediately the accuracy buff goes away for darkness and they get the debuff. And so what would happen is like you would set up for instance, let's say you set up a, a kill box and it was dark in there and it was all roofed and everything and you had a door held open at the, the entrance to it. That door gets destroyed. One piece of wall gets destroyed. One piece of roof gets destroyed. Any of that. And suddenly all of your darkness pawns in there, even though they're still in the dark where they're standing, no longer have the darkness uh, combat buffs. In fact, they would get the accuracy hit instead. But yeah, if they fixed it, definitely test it out and let me know. Cause that would be that'd be really awesome i was uh like i said we thought it was a bug when uh, ideology first came out it's better oh it's here at zero percent so even if it's aggressive it doesn't matter we got lucky again we'll send out uh ken to eat it hang on hang on Don't injure it too much. Crap. <laughs> Let's gonna capture another one. We captured one alive once. Not only was it calm, but there was no zombies on the map for it to throw anyway. Did drop a serum though. Well, we're finally almost done with the helmets. Actually, I guess we're technically done with them, so we can finally replace some body parts. One more lung. Make a speed run. Heard the record is two days. I don't like Rimworld speed runs. This is not my thing. I've done speedruns of other games, but the RimWorld one is just kind of meh. Start up the game. Immediately travel to the ship. Turn on the reactor. Put it on 3x speed. And then do nothing. Just sit back. <laughs> kind of funny, though. Um, there is a speedrun of RimWorld that was discovered. That is um, scenario. Custom scenario. So for anyone that doesn't know, when you go into scenario and you hit edit scenario, there's actually something in there that says uh, you can use a seed. So you can use a seeded scenario. Someone founded or found a seed scenario that starts you. Oh my God. That starts you on the final Arco Nexus map. <laughs> so you can actually just go to like tribal, hit edit scenario, put in the seed for that tribal seed start or whatever. Start on the Arco Nexus map and just go click the button and in the game in like nine seconds or whatever it is. So they're always kind of silly. I know a lot of games have that kind of stuff, but oh, your brother died. That's sad, but you want to do drugs. That's maybe not as sad. No, it's changed a lot since I did it. I was in the lead for Darkest Dungeon for quite a while. And then I stopped doing those because I just got tired of them as well. And then someone found out a way that you load a separate instance of Darkest Dungeon 
and it alters the RNG of the first run, the first instance. So these days it's gotten really crazy where you literally have Darkest Dungeon installed through Steam and then you have a non-Steam one and you open the non-Steam one and that's and you share the save file then you open the Steam one and then you run a dungeon and then you load the other one before you exit the dungeon and then it's like you didn't run the dungeon but you still have all the loot from it. I don't know how people find those things out but it's like the um those crazy runs where some of the like cartridge games from back in the day they had their like the data that they save is in the same place as some other feature in another game and so like the speed run something like I don't know a Zelda game or something you can put in Mario really quick or put in like a bass fishing and and fish in a certain spot and then without turning it off put in the other cartridge and it skips a level it's all kinds of crazy stuff like that yeah it's it's kind of a cool thing and it's cool to see like once but I prefer generally glitchless any percent for most of the speed runs that I watch also, my favorite speedruns are generally platformers. The competition is who cheats better, yeah. yeah. That's also why there's lots of categories these days. Yeah, and I mean, even seeing like um, the uh, tool-assisted speedruns where they program a basically a bot, so, so to say, to run things can be really crazy. Like, I actually really like watching the tool-assisted speedrun competitions of things like Celeste. Uh, Celeste was a really fun playthrough. I really like Celeste. Tool-assisted speedruns of things like Celeste are really nuts. It's like, oh my god. Like, everything is frame perfect. It's nuts. All right, who needed the lungs? It was Kane. Kane's lungs. Stall. Tox fire left. Tox fire right. Make sure our best doctor is the ones working on that. Doing armchairs. We're, we're maxed on wells, so I just figured we were over. We were, like, had so much cloth that I just, just threw them down. So we're capped. We're raid capped anyway. Also doing turrets everywhere, which is not like me, but that's that's the zombie mod making that happen. All the kids are lacking clothes. I am, yeah, yeah. I figure if the kids survive long enough to wear adult clothes, then they deserve clothing. Confusion? Pretty confused about. Why'd you take my lungs? They were full of asthma. That's how asthma works. You're welcome. You guys are weapons dealers. Surely you can make it to the base. With minimal zombie bites. I don't think you have anything I'm going to buy anyway. Well, I mean, they usually have a few, like, normal components. We'd buy that. So. Just future runners, yeah. We can see their zombie infection all the way from the base, apparently. More turrets, more turrets. Hardly ever hear me say that either. Weird one. Weird one this run. Wow, you could actually probably go out there and trade them. And a fair alpaca flirted with Kaz by describing him as a beautiful sun. Kaz became aroused. <laughs> the sun's not the only thing rising, alpaca. Kaz said. Anyway, it worked. Uh, that's unfortunate though. Alright, let's go trade. Scan steel. How long until some of you guys turn into zombies? Ah, it's yo. Four traders on the top of a high wall. <laughs> like binoculars. Oh, that one just got bit. Oh, that guy's infected for sure. Wow, now that we uh, buffed it up to three turrets per, like, exit. It's been a lot more stable as far as just, like, killing random zombies that are starting to gather. I mean, I could do that over here, but the problem is this is near an edge. So I would need, like, a wall so it's not just shooting over there all the friggin' time. And to get that done, we'd probably want to wait until, uh... A zero zombie day, which we might not have again for ever. Hello, <laughs> what's the... I'm looking at the year forecast. None of that goes down to a zero. Since you'll ask, watch the zombies come after you if you go outside, but not near the zombies. They're attracted. It depends on the zombie, but in general, they're attracted to noise. So one of the reasons why we were able to get to where we got in this run where we lost other ones is that I stayed on great bows for a really long time because zombies don't come after you for shooting a bow. Uh, in fact, we would even, even the zombie that you hit with the arrow would not aggro. So bows were like super, super important for us to, uh, like get a little bit of progress and build some wall, you know, go out and get a geothermal without, without approaching them until we got to this critical stage of having so much firepower that it doesn't matter if we attract them to those people. 
That's going to change when we up the difficulty again. Well, sound is going to attract zombies, and they're going to be faster now, so... Things might go to crap really fast, actually, thinking of it. It goes right with the theme that I said, anyway, that they're getting stronger the longer we survive. If the game starts lagging much less once we switch to the zombie mode, I think I will get the Mechanitor stuff, but if not, I just don't know if I want more entities. I do want to try that Thumper sometime. I wonder if it also damages... Wait, it uses uh, Kim Fuel, right? Look at that again. Yeah, it doesn't connect to power. Hmm. It might be an interesting thing to use to gather up serum. It only takes steel and chem fuel. So have to be really careful about people going over to it. For science, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm, where's a good place? I think that is a pretty good place. Yeah, I think I'm going to see how this works. It might be something that we don't really use, but I don't want to end the run without having tried this out. And clear a few more of these out. All this gets worked on. Anyone else on their way already? Yeah, Kane's still on their way. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about the chainsaw. I have been doing melee though, but we have used the uh, the zombie shocker. All right, so now we need to fill it with kim fuel, I guess. Which kim fuel does this thing take? Set fuel level up to two hundred and fifty settings, intensity, and interval. Uh, so we're gonna need more chem fuel. I guess we'll keep a little bit more than, you know, uh, this is probably enough fuel to test it. All right. Let's, uh, clear the work space from this side for now. See what happens here. In fact, I'm gonna clear it from this entire area. All right, so let's see. Settings. So intensity. Oh, the intensity just makes it much further reach. Interesting. In the interval, 25 times per hour. Okay. That's one time per hour. That's interesting. It also says it damages structures, though. Let's take a look at what that's like. Yeah, I'm curious if this damages the stuff or not. It does, yeah, look at that. Each hit does 1 HP, including to the turret. Okay. Interesting. Let's... How... How large can this radius get? That is pretty large. Siege weapon. <laughs> so you can gather, like, that entire corner with it. Yeah, so it makes... Oh, it's going to group zombies around it. And then we could do things like go out, cull the zombies, get serum. Yeah, I'm not sure with our setup how useful this one's going to be for us, but... It would be a semi-automated way to get some serum, you know? So you'd have to make a room around it, have a shocker connected to batteries, and the thumper would damage all that stuff at the same time. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth it. Spitter. Another calm one. <laughs> Lucky for us. Once again, take combat command. We've only had spitters today. Or, I mean, uh, only calm spitters today. Going after spitters is going to be harder when we buff the zombies also, of course. Like, imagine if all these are running at super speed to us. Several explosive zombies in there. Damage spell is off with radius as well. I think one of the things that you could use it for is to uh, actually have safer caravanning. Like, if we put several of these in, like, the corners, for instance, and congregated the zombies there, we would have safer routes off the map for... Or as far as, like, setting up an actual area that combines this and the zombie shocker, we'd be repairing the zombie... We'd take a lot of batteries, and we'd have to repair the zombie shocker 
and walls like all the time. It also help to make them not uh, maybe congregate on the doors. Best use case scenario for us would probably be to help with uh, setting up caravan stuff, but no line of collects necessary. I mean, you do get a bonus. You, you get a bigger speed boost from it, but it's not as big of an upgrade as going from one uh, or from zero to one. And part of it's because of you just need to, I mean, faster the better. But part of it is for kiting. You just want to be faster than some of the things that are going to be chasing you. And one is enough to do that. So two is better, but it's not as big of an increase as going from zero bionics to one. Kind of the same thing with bionic eyes, like getting a bionic eye to help with um, help with sight shooting, etc. Is good, and two is better, of course, but it's still you're gonna get more benefit out of the first. All right, uh, I'm gonna take this lull here and finally go use the restroom. Guys, don't let an aggressive spitter spawn while I'm in the restroom. If you would, if you do, just have Kin eat it. All right, you guys know what to do. Just send send Kin. It'll be fine. Good job. How many spitters did you guys kill? Did you feed them to Kin? One of the problems of the game is running pretty slowly now. So we're going to bump it down to less zombies, but way better zombies. So, well, Ryan, he wanted me to send him the save file, so I made a copy of it. So he can, uh, he's working on updates for his mod, his zombie mod. So I sent him that so he can see maybe why it's running a little slower and see if there's anything that he can do. Um, but it was suggested by him that we maybe turn it down to like 200 stronger zombies. So we're gonna, we're gonna first turn down the zombie count. We're gonna see if that helps with the lag and then we're gonna start buffing them up. Zombies on the map. So the maximum he said was 200. Or we could turn the threat down. We'll just do the the zombie number first. And then we are going to make there be faster and stronger zombies. But first off, he just wants to see if the 200 will help the game's performance. So let's let's try that first. Let's still run five, yeah. So we're going to start out with that. We did try out the uh, Thumper, which we might play around with today and figure try to figure some things out. But uh, yeah, so start out with, we're going to see if turning it down a little bit helps the uh, performance, and then we'll go from there. I'm guessing we're going to go have to kill zombies to get it down to that number. Oh well, yeah, let's grab a little group. Grab a little group. We'll head out. There's a Breacher zombie over there anyway, so we'll uh, we'll give it a little look. Anyway, the, the next thing we're going to do after we check out if performance is better with 200 is we are going to increase the zombie speed the zombie senses so they can sense sound and people from further away and increase their intelligence intelligence their intelligence it's going to be weird switching to zombies that are faster than our pawns that's gonna be nuts yeah we really should try melee gods versus zombies sometime it already feels like it's running a little bit better even at 313 so sitting down insulting three guy make things better I sometimes do, but there is always a risk that you are going to uh, kill them, which I've done before, or uh, severely injure them. If you get lucky, you'll just have a normal social fight really soon while they're insulting each other, which is basically what happened there. Um, I generally do the beatdown type thing when it's um, earlier, depending on the pawn it is, and if it's earlier in the game, you know, but... Um... Oh, it's going to make raids more difficult, too. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about that. What kind of, that must have been a breach raid. The points were so low, it must have been a breach raid. So it's going to make raids get to us sooner. And right, I need to kill down to 200 zombies so that we can get a good test. But uh, right now, we need to go out and kill this breach. All melee breachers, it looked like. And I'm not sure I feel like double tapping all these, so we'll just, uh, we'll just not, <laughs> we'll just go kill them as they start turning. And there's some turrets out there, so. All right, so that group right there is going to be turning into zombies. So is that one. Let's just go ahead and go out with a small group and start culling that. It's lore. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been saying too. Yeah, like as the years pass, the zon oh. okay, that's more than I thought. As the years pass, the zombies that have survived that long are the ones that are stronger or smarter than the others. Well, that's a lot, man. I wonder if it's going to make the runners smarter and stuff, too. Probably. Oh, 
Oh no. Oh no. An auto mortar. Chase in 15 days. Huh. Low shields. So now if we got a spitter, aggressive spitter behind this, that's when things get scary, right? So burner, gunner, blaster, mech assemblers for pikemen, lancer. Who knows what's going to fall? I feel like we just go ahead and take care of this. Oh my lord. Things are happening. Thank you.